So we get a lot of questions on supercharging and what the difference is between V2 and V3. So today, we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so we are actually here at a V3 supercharger. Unfortunately, they're actually working on it right now on a Sunday. Yeah. So they must be in prep to get that ready. So we wanted though to talk about though the big differences between V2 and V3 superchargers. And we we're actually very fortunate enough to see a V3 supercharger being built and actually got some cool video and footage of the internal parts because that is also different. Yeah, so a few weeks back we were up in Idaho Springs in Colorado yep. and that's where they were building the first V3 supercharger. Yeah. And they didn't have the covers on yet, so we were able to see some of the internals there. And you can see down at the base is where they have some cooling fans and some tubes. The reservoir. With quick connect yeah. tubes and stuff where the cooling liquid, some sort of, you know, probably ethylene glycol or something like that, yeah. is used, which runs through the charging cable and helps keep the co cable cooler while doing a supercharge. Yeah, and so V2s don't have that. So if you are charging at a V3, you're likely to hear some pretty loud, very high RPM fans, and that's just working to keep things cool because if you get too hot, it's gonna limit your charge capability. And that is in addition to the fans that your car has built into it to help keep it cool at the optimal temperature. Okay, here is a V3 supercharger without the outer shell on it. You can actually see there's the pump right there on the bottom. You can see the two fans and radiator and everything right there on the left, right here. Basically, there's this little tube that goes all the way up to help cool it. And then right there on there is, I presume, where it will go down in here. It looks like that, or it's just like an end cap where they can fill it. But yeah, you can see V3s are truly water-cooled. And in V2 superchargers, they actually don't have any kind of cooling reservoir or anything in the bottom. We actually have one that we took apart. Mind you, it was a stored display, but it did have all the other internal, the internal parts. And so there is none of that cooling in there, unlike the V3. And now when I was at the V3 in Vegas, I actually did have my FLIR camera with me. And unfortunately, I didn't really see a temperature difference in that cable. It could have been though that it just wasn't hot enough. Um, and I'm sure those are temperature controlled. So if it's not hot enough, it's really probably not gonna do anything. But the fact that they are temperature controlled and have that cooling capability is, something nice, especially in those hotter climates or superchargers that are used very frequently, like one after another for cars. So many of you might wonder, what's the difference between a V2 and a V3 supercharger? Well, the V3 superchargers are fairly recent. They yeah. had a few of them. They started rolling out last year in California on Hawthorne and the Fremont area. Then they've expanded to like Las Vegas, but now pretty much every Almost all superchargers yeah. they're expanding around the country are the V3 superchargers. And one quick way you can recognize those is that the charging cable is much thinner than what you'll see on a regular V2 supercharger. For those of you who have never supercharged before, you might not recognize how thick the cables are. But another way you can check is right in the car. Okay, in order to find the closest supercharger, in, in order to determine if it's V3 or V2, just go to the navigation screen, touch the screen, and click the charger icon at the bottom. Then you'll see all the nearby superchargers that are available to you. If you click on one, you can see how many people are charging, and right below that it will show if it's 250 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts. You also might find some that are only 120 130 kilowatts if they haven't been upgraded yet. And on here, just so you guys are aware, anything that's gray are destination chargers. So you can actually click on them and it will tell you they have two connectors, 16 kilowatt max a piece. These are available for customers at the courtyard, so only if you're staying there. And also in the app here, you can actually look it up by hitting the charging screen and you can actually see your closer superchargers here. You can see that has three of 10 available, that's got one of 10 available. And if you click on it, it will actually share it with your car. And that will also be a good indication of if the stalls are paired or not. Anything that is 250 kilowatts uh, for charging is not going to be paired, whereas anything else will be. So that's another good indication of 
what stall you should potentially choose. Yep. So with a V3 supercharger, those are going to be ones that are not paired. So your car is going to be able to charge at up to 250 kilowatts, no matter which stall you're at. You don't need to worry about the other cars affecting your speed. Exactly. And that's the big benefit, I think, with the V3s. Yeah, your car's not going to charge at that full 250 for the entire charge, but it will be capable of up to that amount. Yeah. Whereas with a V2 supercharger, as we've mentioned before, those are paired. And you'll see them labeled like 1A, 1B, mm -hmm. or 2A, 2B. Whenever you look at those numbers, the 1A and 1B are paired together. So if somebody's already plugged in and charging on a 1A, if you plug in on 1B, that's going to not give you the full charge because the car there before you is going to have priority. Yep. Once their start charging starts decreasing, then your charge will be able to go up and and your speed will increase while you're charging, but you don't have to worry about that all with a V3 supercharger. Another way you can tell the difference with a V3 versus a V2 supercharger is the V3 superchargers will have this large uh, white supercharger cabinet, if they're available. Sometimes yeah. they're going to be fenced in or, or have a wall so you won't Hidden. be able to see them, but in other locations they're just out in the open. And if it's a big white cabinet, uh, those are capable to up to one megawatt of charging, so 250 kilowatts for four cars. And if you see like two of those large white supercharger cabinets, that means that that could serve up to eight supercharger stalls. At an older V2 supercharger, the cabinets look different and they have a big exhaust hood on the top. And those superchargers only can serve up to two stalls each. So if you see perhaps four of those, then there's gonna be able to serve up to eight stalls. So as I mentioned before, Tesla is currently installing tons of V3 superchargers around the country, around the world, but they are still installing V2 in some locations just yeah. where the permitting was already approved for V2 or even the, the slower 72 kilowatt urban superchargers. But at some locations, such as in Kettleman City and a few other places around the country, you might actually find a combination of both V2 yeah. and V3 superchargers. And if you're pulling into one of those places, you might actually see them labeled where the V3 superchargers will have have a small sign on the top saying it's 250 kilowatts. For those of you who have a Model 3 or maybe a newer Raven S or X, you might choose to use one of those V3 superchargers first, and that would allow you to charge faster than if you're yeah. using one of the V2 ones. And kind of vice versa, if you have an older car that's not capable of using that 250 kilowatt charging, you might want to stick to one of the V2 ones and allow those who have the faster supercharging to use those faster V3 superchargers. So yeah, just a little bit of information on V2 versus V3. We've been getting a lot of questions and a lot of people asking, why are V3s so special? So quick recap, they can charge faster. You can charge it up to 250 kilowatts and the stalls aren't paired, which means every car will get that max charge rate and you don't have to worry about someone being next to you. And also the cooling capabilities. That way, if for some reason there's a very high usage supercharger and it's car to car to car, the next car won't have to worry about having a supercharged throttled back due to high temperatures. It should always be at an optimal temperature for the optimal charge. Exactly. And also the one benefit of those V3 superchargers is they allow you to, with that higher power charge, it's gonna be a quicker charge. So you quicker, can get, get charged quicker and get back on the road that much faster. So if you guys have any V2 versus V3 differences or any opinions, go ahead and list them down there in the comment section and we can talk about it down there. As always though, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you're looking to accessorize a Model SX or Model 3, much like this one, definitely check them out, all linked down below. You can get 15% off your first purchase using the code Tesla Inventory at checkout. My two must-have accessories are definitely gonna be a center console wrap just because it helps protect that gloss black material that's very fingerprint and scratch prone that Tesla uses, as well as a matte screen protector, it really helps cut down any glare from the sun, as well as any fingerprints on there, because that is probably one of the most touched things in the car, besides the steering wheel. As always though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video, go and click here to subscribe, here for some other ones, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.